ಪಾದ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಿಬ್ರಾಜಗಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಶ್ರೋತ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಿಂಹ ಸುಲ ಭಯ ಚರಣರವಿಂದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರೌಪಾದ ಕೀಟಿ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗೇ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರೌಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವೃಂದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಸಂವತ ವೈಷ್ಣವೃಂದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ನಿತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರಮಾನಂದೇ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದಂಬಲ್ ದಿ ಗೋಡಿ ಸರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ all glories to the assembled devotees are hey krishna all glories all glories to sri sri guru and gauranga all glories to sri la prabhu pa to have a access in bhagavatam to see the lord in every pages sri la prabhu pa give a very nice analogy that we should pray to krishna and hopefully everybody's lifestyle align with this four principle that prabhupad put in the purport and then you can concentrate your mind in the uh, with the attentiveness while you are hearing then you will be able to see krishna in every pages every word of shrimad bhagavatam So let us pray to Lord Vasudev to purify our consciousness. Please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om and we are expressing our grateful <coughs> with the attitude to these personalities so we can recite together narayanam namaskritam naranchaiva narottamam devi saraswati vyasam tato jayam mudirayet nashta prayesu abhadreshu nittam bhagavat sevaya bhagavate uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naishtaki today we are reciting canto 2 chapter 6 verse 2 and this chapter entitled purusha sukta confirmed vishana chakruti thakur this chapter entitles um very interesting can i find about uh, the purpose of the creation so 
synonyms first. Sarva all ashunam different kind of life air. Cha and bayu of the air. Cha also tat his nashe in the nose. Parama ayane in the transcendental generating center. Ashina of the Ashin Kumar demigods. Oshodinam of all medicinal and herbs. Cha also. Grana, his smelling powers. Moda, pleasure. Pramodaya, specific sports. Sarvasunam cha bayoscha. Tanna se paramayane Ashino Aushadi Namcha Grano Moda Pramodaya Sarvasunamcha Bayuscha Tanna se paramayane Ashvinar Oshadi Namcha Grano Moda Pramodaya Sarvasu Namcha Bayuscha Tanna se paramayane Ashvino Oshodi Namcha Grana Moda Pramodaya Please chant. Sarvasunamscha Bayuscha Nase Paramayane Asino Shadi Namcha Ano Mora Pramodayo Sarvasunam Shabayosha Sarvasunam Paramayane Translation and no purport. It's very interesting. They purposely gave me this. I just found out yesterday, so I asked Mother Sri Gorang, he said, you have enough content. That's like very... She was merciful to me. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Sai Prabhupada. 
His two nostrils are the generating centers of our breathing and of all other airs. His smelling powers generate the Ashin Kumar demigods and all kinds of medicinal herbs and his breathing energies produce different kind of fragrance. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sagenanjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tashmai Sri Guru Devinama Sri Chaitanya Manao Vishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Shapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamsham Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tam Sajivam Sadaitam Sabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhanitamasham Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Sami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasate Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunnavadi Paschata Deshatarine Vancha kalpa taru vesha kripa sindhu bhai bacha patita nam pavane bho vaishna de bho namo Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadhara Siva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Minna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama I remember some time back, a couple years back, no, maybe four years back, I was giving a summary on chapter by chapter through Ishkan Bhagavad Mahavidyalaya, the education center in Vrindavan. So this chapter, we divided into three categories. One is connect, second is universal creation, third is total theology. So one to three chapter is connect, and I found a very interesting part uh, of Srila Prabhupada about in relation to these chapters. So I'm going to read this. This is lecture, 4th September 1966, New York. Santa means the person who are sadhu, who are pious. They can cut off their words, uh, sorry, they can cut off by their words our attachment with this material world. I hope you all are aware. This canto is all about universal form. And this is the only canto has a three chapter all about universal form. Just to help us to cut off. Cut off doesn't mean we uh, die uh, from. <laughs> means uh, our affinity, our liking to this world, separately from Krishna, will be cut off. So Prabhupada says here, they can cut off by their words our attachment with this material world. They can cut off. Again he repeated. Just like Krishna is speaking to Arjuna, what is the idea of speaking so many things? Just to cut off his attachment from the so-called material affection. He is affected with something which is stumbling his progress 
in his own duty. So he is, Krishna is presenting his Bhagavad Gita just to cut off. Cut off. Santa evahi chindanti ukti bihi. Ukti bihi chindanti means cut. Now for cutting something we require some sharpened instrument. But here, to cut off the mind from attachment, it require, requires sharpen ukti. Ukti means words, sharpen topics. There should not be just like when a person cuts something. There is no mercy. Similarly, when a sadhu or a person saint speak to his student, he does not make show any mercy. He speaks the truth so that his mind may be cut off from the unreal attachment. Isn't so sweet? Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So chapter 6 today, yesterday it began with Ram Govinda Prabhu and he gave a very nice explanation. This Chapter 6 talks about Purusha Shukta. I'm sure you all grew up with it. In Mayapur, at least we grow up hearing every day the Guru Kuli singing in the... Uh, where is right now is not visible, but it used to be near the Lotus Fountain. And every day they used to ch chant. Because they used to chant morning and evening, we memorized it. Shahasra Shirsha Purusha Shahasraksha Shahasrapat. Even though I never sat down there, but I memorized just by hearing for years and years, decades, I would say. <clears throat> so Purusha Shukta, a famous hymn from the Rig Veda, which is dedicated to the cosmic being, Purusha, is the prayers uttered by Brahmaji at the time of creation. This is the whole chapter. It's called Purusha. It explains how all things, past, present, future, emanates from and rest in the Purusha. Srimad Bhagavatam confirms this Purusha to be Garvadakshai Vishnu. It's not somebody else. It's the same Garvadakshai Vishnu. The whole from his navel, the stem came. All the, all the planets is within the stem. It's not like outside, floating. But that stem is not a stem, I think, of this world. It's a giant. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam confirms this Purusha to be Garvadakshay Vishnu, who is imminent in the manifested world and simultaneously transcendental to it. Brahmaji explained in this chapter the significance of the mouth, nostril, eyes, skin, because as every day you will see the different speaker talks about particular part of the Mahapurusha's body. But it's the same as Garvadakshe Vishnu, it's a related. Hairs, nails, arms, feet, genitals, anus, rectum, back, veins, valley, and heart of the universal form. He went on to establish that regardless of one's qualification and so-called greatness, no living being, us, can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead in totality. One is impelled to surrender because if the Lord is unaware of his limits, how can we ever understand? I hope it makes sense to all of you. So I made a little notes this morning. I'm going to share with you what I understand. The summary, because there is no purport on this. So I'll just give a little summary of this whole chapter. This is all about universal creation. I am sure many of you can relate. Sometimes we wonder how 
I became disconnected. Even though I, I read many, many times Jaiva Dharma, Chaitanya Charitamita, Prabhupada's different lecture, negative, positive, both sides. 3.29 3.26. There's so many quotes. It's almost like the opposite. Uh, but, so I always wonder, like, how did I disconnect from Krishna in the first place? Of course, I got satisfaction from those research. So I'm going to share what it is boils down to me. When Srila Prabhupada was once asked why Krishna created the material world, I'm sure you heard this because that was a very heavy voice he had. He emphatically replied, because you wanted it. In the Facebook, I put it there too. Prabhupada was very heavy and you could see. Because you wanted it. The Lord endows each living being with the free will to exist separately from him. And the universal creation facilitates that choice. Now here we'll see Shukdev Goswami narrated now how Brahma, the engineer of the universe, explained the process of material creation to his son Narad Muni. When we understand the greatness of God, yesterday Ram Govinda Prabhu narrated very nice how to appreciate God's creation. And we should not take it lightly. I found something very secret because, how do I word it in a few words? Nobody can leave, Prabhupada says in the preface of Nectar Devotion, without loving someone. And if you don't agree, you are a liar. Because I believe 100% what Prabhupada says about it. And I experience that. So nobody can live without loving someone. But that search, whether philanthropist or politician or scientist or whoever, trying to find that completeness will never come to completely complete or happy until they discover the beloved is Krishna. Now question is, when you come to this point, then you have to find out how to develop love for Krishna. How? Something you have within you, that is called bhava or rati, attachment to Krishna. 10.14.16 in the uh, purport, Sanadan Goswami Pad writes that uh, Krishna gives a particular sentiment to each soul for him to reciprocate and establish that relationship. So from that angle, each devotee, each soul actually, is very important to relation to Krishna. We can never ever look down any soul whether it's a devotee or not devotee, especially devotee we should always respect because from Krishna's perspective, each soul has a particular relationship and particular way to nourish the Lord. I cannot do it, nobody can do it. So each soul is important. Now, to awaken that, you need to trace the rati or attachment that you have that sentiment within your heart. And in order to awaken that attachment, rati, you have to do sadhana, very strong sadhana every day. At least the five things you must do. The five most important things. First one is sadhu sangha, then nama kirtan, hearing Bhagavatam every day, <laughs> and then must worship deity. Look at the deity. You cannot say you live in a temple, whether it's your house or something, without a form of a god. That's very interesting the way Prabhupada also put, temple means five things, he said, also. It was very interesting the way he put it. Because a lot of our temple, like I, I go to Brooklyn temple, from the outside it looks like a five-star hotel to me. Because there's so many hotels around. It's a very affluent area. 
and there is no gopuram like a big dome or you know like a temple in south india it looks like oh this look like a temple but most of our in the west the temples are looks like a flat apartment house or building but according to the definition of temple these are perfectly temple because you have a deity a form to see the beautiful transcendent form of the lord whether deity or a painting or something then you have a bhagavatam recitation you have a chanting hari krishna maha mantra you have a devotee association where attraction and inspiration will be there every day and the last thing prabhupad put anybody would guess out of five i said four what is the number five who said something ha huh? dham 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 no that is the dham if you have this five thing i said four things one prashadam thank you how can we forget this prashadam and proper said like this this is what makes a temple so thank you so when we understand the greatness of krishna how he creates how he maintains how he enters the material universes our appreciation for his loving compassion increases so this is what chapter 4 5 and chapter now 6 now how did it begin so i, I made a little note of shila propas one purport the material creation is but a temporary exhibition of the material energy of the almighty god oh i didn't finish the previous talk so when you awaken the rati bhav that time krishna will give you the love of god it is not the love of god you know you going to make it when krishna sees my earnest desire to serve and my prayers for his mercy and the devotee's mercy and i am behaving properly to be a very good candidate to serve then he will sanction it then you will feel complete joyful joyful state so living entity are constitutionally eternal servitor of the lord but some of them because of misuse they are independence including me do not wish to serve therefore they are allowed to enjoy the material nature which is called somebody help me maya, maya illusion thank you just to make sure why is this universe created question why is this universe created the material world provides an opportunity for the errant soul to s- simulate the role of being the controller and enjoyer even yesterday this gentleman was telling me over phone he says well i have to take care i have to maintain this and then i said that's so exactly what god does you try to imitate little bit why not you say you are instrument of god to maintain them why are you taking the credit you have to maintain this is the imitation he said oh my god i never thought that i said yeah this is this is true so initial ingredients and impetus for creation comes from lord vishnu after which brahma takes over as the engineer you can say architect also engineer also both the various living being assume the role of subsequent controllers by developing their energies in crafting cities alachua communities families homes as long we have a desire that this is for a devotee to live comfortable then is bhakti if it is just well i want to build my house the way i want i may be devotee but this is what i like it's still karma mixed so we have to be very careful <clears throat> our sojourn in this material world can be likened to a movie 
just as a movie is essentially a manipulation of a white light, the material world is similarly a combination of various transformation of the material energy. Now the movies, I hope you all had a chance to see movies sometime. Movies tend to be based around the aspiration and dreams of the audience. In the same way, the material world is manufactured according to the desire of the each of us soul. Unfortunately, just as watching a movie never truly fulfills our desire, our activities in the material world never bring the full satisfaction we yearn for. Movies have an entrance fee. I hope you all know that. Even with Prabhupada's uh, movie, we had to pay. Was it? Yeah, we had, we had to pay, I remember, in Gainesville. Movies have an entrance fee. And similarly, to enter the movie of the material world, one simply needs an accumulation of karma. By the way, I research first birth, Prabhupada says, Brahmaji, also first birth is human being. Because without human being, there is no karma. Animal doesn't do karma. Why animal is a result of karma, you can say. While we have good and bad reaction in our stock, we return to the material world to settle the balance. Just as people hop from movie to movie, experiencing different flavors and emotions, the entangled living being hops from universe to universe in various forms of life. What they are trying to experience, the variety of words on offer. One devotee, Nalachu, I won't say the name because I love him. I asked him, so what is your idea about karma and gyan? He says, Pran Govinda, I tell you, very straightforward. I have no attraction on this merging idea of gyanis. I said, okay, what about karma? Well, I don't know, I may check up the heaven. I say, okay, <laughs> thank you for being honest, but you may get stuck there for a while. <clears throat> because we like to experience different flavor and emotions. The entangled living being hops from universe or planet to planet, trying to experience what they have. Only when we retire from the frantic search for material enjoyment and redirect our emotion, energies towards a loving relationship with Krishna, we will find our permanent and steady state of being in the real world, the spiritual world. Now the question also in this chapter will be answered. When is the universe created? We found out why it is created, I discussed. Now, when it is created? If we look at the world around us, it is clear that everything functions in cycles. Seasons repeat themselves. Days of the week rotate in sequence and the sun continually rises and sets. If you think this way, you'll see in this, because each person will speak on a particular sloka. We may get lost. I mean, I may get lost, you may not get lost. But when you think overall picture is very easy. So the Vedic scripture, Bhagavatam explained, our lives also run in cycle. We are born, we grow, we reproduce, stay for some time and gradually begin to dwindle. Then finish, die. Only to be reborn and repeat it all over again. This, of course, is known as samsara. If you ever heard that word, we sing every day. Samsara dava nalalira loka. The greater material creation mirrors this cyclical pattern. So the cosmos moves in a succession of a great cycle called Dibba Jugas. And the Vedic texts detail the length of this cycle. 
and you all know dapar yuga i mean kali yuga dapar yuga treta yuga this is just a multiply if you if you put 432000 years then is kali yuga you double it 864000 years is dapar yuga you multiply another uh, adding 432 so 1296000 years will be treta yuga then 1,728,000 years will be Satya Yuga or Krita Yuga. So not only do the ages decline in length, but they decline in spiritual vibrancy and saintly virtuosity. We are currently 5,000 what? Uh, 3,111 plus 2,022. So you calculate. 5,000 something plus the age of Kali Yuga. When this period comes to end, 427,000 years left, a partial destruction takes place and Sapta Yuga is re-established. And 71 Dibba Yuga, also in this chapter, you will see details given, makes up the Mannantar, 71 Dibba Yuga. Sapta Tirta Dapar Kali, this four, you multiply by 71, that's called one Manvantar, lifetime of a Manu, who is the father of mankind. And there are 14 Manus in a day of Brahma. And if you calculate, it will come 996, but it says 1000, means junction, 4, uh, in between the Juga changes. Same thing, each day is followed by a night of equal length. This means 1,000 Dibbo Yuga cycle, approximately 4.3 billion years, makes up merely one day in the life of Brahma. And each day is followed by night of equal length. And during the night, Brahma sleeps and most planets are submerged in water of devastation. And at the end of the night, Brahma awakens and another day of 1,000 cycles commences. 360 of this day and night make up one Brahma's years. Brahma lives for 100 such years. The time frame are mind-boggling. Now, what is the importance of creation? Very quickly. Numerous sanctions of Srimad Bhagavatam discuss the creation of the material world. It is, the, it is a topic which is detailed in Cantos 2, right here. 3, 5, and 11, and 12. Why is so much emphasis and prominence given to the subject matter? Because I found few key words. One is Krishna's greatness. This is repeated again and again. When we go through these cantos, we will explore the complexity, intricacy, and extreme vastness of the universal creation. We better appreciate Krishna's greatness in masterminding the whole process. The ingenuity of Krishna's system will allow each of us to enjoy in the spiritual world while this mammoth task is simultaneously carried out by his expansion and energies. It also demonstrates how far Krishna extends himself out of unlimited compassion to fulfill the aspiration of the living entity. Second point I found, how insignificant we are, minuteness. When confronted by the huge ocean, all these layers, Mother Bhagavati Devi was explaining the other day, we naturally feel quite small, isn't it? Similarly, when we begin to comprehend the enormity of the universe, it helps us put our life in perspective. And that's why this canto repeatedly exposed the absurdity of thinking oneself to be to the enjoyer, controller, or center of the universe. Third point I also found, overall confidence. The inquisitive mind, Srila Prabhupada said, will naturally look up at the nighttime sky and wonder 
where it all come from? I remember Nolni Kanta Prabhu gave class, Bhagavatam class, oh, I don't know, maybe 12 years back in this same place. And he was saying that he would wonder at night, sleep, look at in the sky. But then he, when he became a devotee, he was wondering like, oh, I like to dress the deity, but I can't dress the universal form of God. <laughs> I still remember, it was so interesting the way he said it. So we'll come to this point, how important is bhakti. And for bhakti to flourish, Prabhus and mothers, this is my request, we need to acknowledge the greatness of Krishna, the insignificance of ourselves, and the possesses unshakable faith in Bhagavatam to make the connection. Thus, the invaluable explanation of the universal creation significantly assist this process. I'll end here. I have a few minutes. I'm surprised that I actually did on time. So that big purport was not there. Good for you. Thank you, Mother Shigurande. Any uh, comment? Mother Ragatmika, Devi, and then we'll come to you, Prabhu. Prabhu, did you say in the beginning that the Virat Purusha is synonymous with Garbhadaksha Vishnu? Yes. Did, did not we previously, in previous classes, I've heard that Virat Purusha is really just imaginary or at least material? What's the, how do you resolve that? Well, we can look at in Bhagavad Gita 1041. It says, Jad Jad Bhivati Mat Sattam Simat Urjitam Yevava Tat Tat Avagat Chattam Mamate Jamsa Sambhava. What is material, what is spiritual? So we can see in the both are in the same place. When we see a attractive things, we get attracted. That is material. But when I see the same attractive things, and I see the source of this attractiveness coming is Krishna, that's spiritual. So is the object of my vision is same? Yeah. Same object I'm looking at. But what is causing material and spiritual is my attitude. So similar way. It is there, but the illusion also given to the soul to see it imaginary. Actually, soul doesn't see imaginary, conditioned soul. The karmi enjoyer, they see everything is wow, unbelievable. You know, there is a, there is a uh, sorry, uh, I don't mean to mention, but in a license plate one I saw, too many girls, too little time. And I was thinking like, wow, what imaginary they have. They think they have like unlimited enjoyment. This is what karmi mentality. And gyani, in other words, call me fantasize everything in this world. It's true. You'll see. I mean, average people. Gyani, those who are wise, little understanding this, they think they just bend in this world. They literally like, doesn't see any connection with Krishna and they, don't, they want to restrain. But what is the, our tendency should be, or our vision should be, Utilize, utilization, how to utilize everything we see, because everything is connected with Krishna. So we are not a renouncer, we are not an exploiter, we are utilizer. That's the three vision. Is that okay? Very good, thank you. Uh, yes, Trivikram Prabhu. I have to end in two minutes because I have a call. I have to call someone waiting. Um, even, even though the Virat um, is said to be imaginary also, Lord Krishna manifested the form. I mean, we, we actually saw it, you know. Well, Arjuna saw the Virat, you know, and then he came to his senses. Anyhow, my question is, um, from our calculation, there's six Manu have passed and we are on the seventh. 
which means that that th this this world is close to two billion years, but from a scientific perspective, it's 4.5 billion years. I mean, have you ever thought about that difference? How how we are follower of Bhagavatam. Reconcile that. No, we are follower of Bhagavatam. We are not competing with scientists. Well, the purpose of Bhagavatam is to rectify our mistake. That's not the purpose of scientists. Purpose of Bhagavatam is to reform our character, attitude, service attitude, and absorb in Krishna. What Bhagavatam says, we take it 100%. What scientists are saying, their own way, let them do whatever they are doing. People are doing. 3.26 Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, don't disturb them. You read that uh, sloka. Krishna says, don't disrupt. Mm -hmm. They are doing what they are doing. If they confront with us, then we talk. Yeah, but then they usually dismiss us as, as the mythical or something else, you know, because... Yeah, I mean, but we don't need we don't need to fight or point finger to somebody uh, whoever what. We try to uplift their consciousness. Only way you can do, like I tell you, example, Radhanath Maharaj was told by these devotees that this professor, he is a, a very genius on the physics. He's a scientist who talks about the cosmology and everything. But he doesn't like the Hare Krishnas. So Maharaj actually did a very challenging thing. I was very moved by it. He went to him, he said, Sir, would you mind of taking a cookie? My mother made it. And you know, scientists looked at it. Really, your mother made it? He said, yes. She will be very happy if you take one. And he took it. <laughs> Until that day, no devotee could give him because they are going by imposing, you know, like an importance of person. So later on asked Maharaj, but your mother didn't make it? He said, all the ladies are my mother. Isn't some Mataji made it? <laughs> so that's true. So he's not lying, it's true. So like that, we have to benefit them, Krishna consciousness. We're not here to challenge the scientists. I'm not trying to put you down or anybody. Well, but we, our business is not to put down anybody. Our business is to ma manifest Krishna. Mercy to them. We have to learn the art how to do it. Thank you. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bancha Kalpataru Vishikipas in the Bhavacha. Patitanam Pavuni Bho Vaishnavi Bho Namo Namaha. Anantakuri Vashnabindaki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.